My name is Jeff Curlo, Revelation Aerospace. Mike, you were asking how we got into this. Uh, started a long, 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 long time ago. Um, as John said earlier, uh, not pushing 60, I'm waving goodbye to 60. It's a few months behind me now, but uh, started in the exposed to airplanes at about three years old, thanks to uh, my dad who was real heavy into the you know, RC in the early days. Single channel, rudder only. In fact, I even got started flying those types of airplanes in the middle 60s, thanks to hand-me-down equipment. But that's where this all began. Um, we were never the type to be content building someone else's kit so, you know, we would design our own stuff, scratch build it as the, as the phrase goes, and uh, grew up in that, designing stuff. First airplane design I did, I was eight years old, and uh, did many, many, between the two of us, my late dad and I, probably well over a hundred different model designs, and uh, moved up into um, various types of competition in, in all the worlds, free flight, control line, and, as well as radio control. And again, more often than not building our own competition models, not, not utilizing someone else's designs, you know, building off of it in some cases, trying new ideas in a lot of cases. Um, uh, you don't get more successful in competition by following the pack. You gotta tread outside the box and, and you know, kind of venture into new territory. So that's what led to this over time. Um, you know, got into racing in my early teens, was very successful, you know, competitive on a world-class level. So that drove the desire for cool, badass, fast, high-performing airplanes. And uh, to be quite frank, full-scale aviation, my exposure to it was around about the time that I was racing and got a flight with a friend in the local EAA chapter in a Stinson 108 and uh, uh, didn't quite fall asleep during the flight but came close and kind of said okay I tried full scale let's go back to models and didn't really have much interest in it until really discovering uh, the employment of composites in, in the full scale world because I had been using them for many years prior to the full scale adaptation of them in the modeling world with racing airplanes like this one over here. We were using foam and fiberglass in the late 60s, long before the KR2, the Very Easy, and some of the others that came about. And with that experience and the desire to do cool stuff, the only attraction for me to full scale was obviously designing my own stuff and either getting into racing, aerobatics, or in this case, the canard world, which has airplanes that you know, even if they're not moving, they still look like they're doing 300 miles an hour. So, so that's what brought me to full scale. Started working on my license, stopped three hours short of finishing it, taking the check ride. I was actually going to take a check ride in a 200 horse, 200 mile an hour velocity. And the airplane went out of annual. And uh, I was in the middle of developing my first canard design, an uh, earlier uh, model called the Orion, which was to be a big turboprop retractable four to six place and have gotten so mired down in in development activity that I've never gotten around to to finish my license which will happen in the near future thanks to the modeling world um, I can fly the hell out of an airplane I just don't have the piece of paper that gives me the blessing yet so so we went through initially uh, starting to pro build completing airplanes other people had started kit planes and then was asked to save a project for uh, Velocity, the company in Florida, the hometown where we, where we lived with Sebastian, right in their neighborhood, and rescued and redesigned um, the, the project at hand, and that became the Velocity XL, probably their most successful um, product in their lineup. And then at that time, met my partner, John, who you'll meet in a couple of minutes. Um, he was involved the year before turning the earlier velocity design into what was termed the Elite, which changed a, a, an overhead clamshell door 
format into gull wing doors like a like a hypercar or sports car so we did the velocity project and then was involved in an airplane that became um, the maverick twin jet the first twin jet engine kit plane that was ever produced in the in our industry and from that jumped off into um, doing my own thing my own designs as again partner john and i you know we're involved here and there in the in the performance enhancement component world, doing work for Lepresti and, in my case, another air, uh, company called Airplane Performance Products out of Melbourne, Florida. And uh, along the way, uh, ended up uh, having a satisfied customer buy me a very easy project. And I excitedly picked it up, brought it home, and the more I looked at it, the more I felt I can do better than that. And that's how the Voodoo Striker Talon series was born 25 years ago. It was uh, a realization that I wanted something more roomy, something that tickled my aesthetic desires uh, more effectively, something that was tactical or fighter, fighter aircraft looking with regard to its aesthetics. And as well along the journey, having done the pro building activity, uh, and, and seeing this, the, the opportunities to enhance the program, the process, something that was easy to build, something fast to build for people. Uh, I have many friends, uh, you know, building wheelers, easies, you know, that the, the, the build experience for them you know, topped the 10 year mark. And a lot of people, you know, never get to fly their project, unfortunately. So. This project and, and all our future, including a, a, a two previous uh, designs of mine, the, uh, the second Orion, which was a, a twin turbo Continental 550 powered airplane, not turboprop, as well as a, a competition acro design I did called the, well, it was termed the RA2. It was to be called the Raptor, nothing to do with the Canard project some people might be familiar with. We did those and then finally revisited this 25 year old design that was collecting dust and getting tattered in a in a file folder and uh, where it was meant to be a little in essence flying motorcycle exercise back in the day between myself um, danny mayor who designed the velocity and other friend wayne lonza uh, dan one day or one evening drinking a couple beers said i got three outboard motor powerheads, brand new, 70 horsepower. Let's each design a single place canard and build them and go up in, this, in the air and have fun. And that's what inspired and brought this about. And then it sat uh, idly for that period of time. And now we're finally getting around to it and, uh, and bringing it to the world. And so far response uh, to it has been, been amazing. We've been, we've been blown away. We just uh, showed it at Oshkosh for the first time, never intending to uh, but got talked into doing so, and uh, it's amazing how many people are interested in it, and, uh, and we appreciate your activity and interest in it, Mike, for, for bringing this, uh, this interview about. Where we stand now coming home from Oshkosh, one is extremely motivated and pumped up thanks to the response. Our, uh, our plan is to have the prototype uh, powered by the six-cylinder D motor, which was referred to as the Striker. Uh, and I'll explain the differences in the models in a second. The Striker with the D motor, we plan to have flying before the end of the year, get through our test flight phase, and then obviously move into heavily into the production um, uh, gearing up. Uh, this one, as I said, is the Striker. It's uh, all carbon airframe, uh, retractable landing gear, and for prop equipped power plants ranging from as low as, as, low as 80 horsepower all the way up through about 160 horse in the uh, piston versions. And then there are some new turboprop possibilities being developed uh, now as well. And then we have two or a lower model called the Talon, which would be all fiberglass, low horsepower, uh, 60 horse at a minimum, ranging up to about 100 horse. Uh, it's a perfect uh, recipient for a guy with an old Rotax 912 and a tired old ultralight or light sport airplane. Uh, it can easily retrofit it into the Talon and have a hundred and probably 160 mile an hour airplane that looks like it's doing 300. Top model will be the Voodoo, which is turbine powered, um, be it single or twin. The, 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 the largest twin engines available or turbine engines available now in the twin format would be kind of a, 
a select few enabled to, uh, to, to enjoy those because of the performance. But uh, the single engine would still give 350-ish mile an hour speeds, a couple hours of range, uh, which translates into 400 plus miles. And all of the three products will be fast build format. Uh, with diligent uh, you know, effort, you can put the airframes together in a six to eight week period ready for you know, your systems installation, engine, avionics, upholstery. So it's really meant to be a super fast build product to get, get people in the air. We have two venues right now. We have our website, revelero.com, and we have a Facebook page, which you can find through the word Revelero or typing in X hyphen project, X dash project. And uh, the Facebook page is updated in many cases almost on a daily basis, but at least definitely a couple times a week. And you'll see us progress through the, the build of the test prototype as well as development of you know, additional airframes to test out the other power plant packages.